great. Now calling the Tuesday, July 16th, 2024 regular meeting of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District Board of Commissioners to order. The time is uh, 7.02 p.m. Please note we're conducting a hybrid meeting, which means uh, staff and members of the public can attend this meeting via virtual teleconference. The hybrid meeting will be video recorded and posted on the district's website. And because we are video conferencing, we will follow a strict protocol for the benefit of that recording. Let's see. We will indicate. I will indicate when commissioners, staff, presenters, and the public will provide comments. If you've called into the meeting and are not using a webcam, please state your name prior to providing your comment for the benefit of that recording. And please practice considerate video conferencing etiquette by muting your line when you're not speaking and limiting distracted behavior on camera or here in the pub in the room. District Clerk Vargas, please connect the roll call. Okay, commissioners, I will be conducting all roll calls this evening in the same order. Please remember the order so that you are prepared to provide your comments or vote. President Spreen. Here. Vice President Sherlock. Here. Commissioner Basiji. Here. Commissioner McDonald. Commissioner Tonka. Commissioner Tyson. Here. Commissioner Warren. Here. And we have five commissioners present, which is a quorum. For the benefit of the recording, I will also conduct a presenter's consultants and staff roll call. Santa Clara County Fire Department Fire Chief Kirk Howe. Present. Uh, Santa Clara County Weed Abatement Manager Kumre is here. Thank you. Um, Municipal Resource Group Human Resources and Strategic Planning Consultant Scott is in the audience. Mm -hmm. Community Education Risk Reduction Manager Gluhan. Present. Okay. Emergency Services Manager BB. Present. Programs Planning and Grants Manager Woods. Here. Technical Analyst slash Project Manager Cronin. Here. Project Operations Manager Russell. Here. General Analyst Georgie. Present. Community Event Specialist Satshiva. Here. Um, let's see. Uh, Field Manager Harmon. Here. Okay. Finance Manager Morreale. Here. And General Manager Logan. Present. Deputy County Council Jackson. I don't see. And Deputy County Council Forbath. Here. Okay. And presenters, consultants, and staff are accounted for. There we go. Uh, item two, Commission President Remarks. First, we want to announce that as a courtesy, any members of the public having objections to the proposed special assessment costs associated with the abatement of hazardous weed, brush, or rubbish on their property, which is an item coming up, are being given an opportunity to discuss their situation with Santa Clara County Weed Abatement Manager Mo Kumre in a separate breakout room, uh, both here in the room and also virtually on Zoom, before providing public testimony under agenda item six. Are there any members of the public present who would like to speak privately with Mr. Kumre before providing comment during the public hearing? I don't see anyone online or in person. Okay, great. I, I want to thank the staff by the way, for making that all available for the public because it's, it's a great feature for everyone to really try and make it useful for, and easy for everyone. Um, the only thing I'll say is that uh, thank you all for being here on a not too hot summer day and evening uh, in July. And I know we have a lot of even though it's July, we have a lot of really important uh, business to, to uh, attend to, so let's go right to it. Moving on to item three, public comment. Persons wishing to address the commission on any subject not on the agenda may do so now. Please note, however, the commission is not able to undertake extended discussion or action tonight on items not on the agenda. Items may be referred to staff for appropriate action, which may include placement on the next available agenda. District policies limit public testimony to three minutes per speaker unless the number of speakers requires the commission president to impose shorter time limits. Do we have any public comments on items not on the agenda? Seeing none in the room. I don't see any online. Okay, great. In that case, we'll move on to item four, agenda amendments and changes. Are there any comments from staff on this item? Not expecting any. Great. Would the commissioners like to make changes in the order of agenda? Good. Sounds good. I think it's... I think the agenda, by the way, I thank the staff. I think the agenda is really well organized, and I appreciate uh, all the thought that goes into that, and a lot of thought does go into that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's move. We don't need to entertain a motion for that. Uh, moving on to the consent calendar. This item is open for discussion. Uh, is there any discussion with the commission on consent calendar items? Let's see. None there. Any public comment on consent calendar items? 
I see one here in the room. Alan Epstein, I live in the district. I'd like to comment on um, item C, item E, and uh, item H. Um, just with regards to the financial package, package item C, I'd just like to point out um, um, the substantial variance between the budgeted numbers and the actual numbers um, for the year. Um, the $18 million, $18.5 million budget had a 251.97% favorable variance, which was $8 million. Um, as you know, a budget is a plan. And uh, if you're not very close to your budget, when, when you're actuals, you have to ask yourself, was there something wrong with the budget or was there something wrong with the execution? Um, this organization spends an inordinate amount of time working on its budget and to have a uh, 297, 251% variance is quite substantial. With regards to the professional services for Jackson's drones, to me it seems um, extraordinary, extraordinary to spend $197,000 on drones. We're not trying to look at the surface of the moon or Mars. We're just trying to cut brush along the road here, which can be seen simply by driving down the road. So it just seems to be an extraordinary amount of money to spend on drones um, to cut to to cut brush. And lastly, with regards to the IT plan, as you know, I've come here many, many times over the last three years talking about the fact that the website has no functional search capability. And um, I did this again a year ago, and I really hoped that the district would put in place a reasonable searchability for its website. I also noticed that it wants to put in place open gov. Um, I tried to find out how much that was going to cost. The town tried to do that a number of years ago. I, I think it was about $30,000 a year and uh, was unsuccessful in implementing it. I'm sure the district would be successful in implementing it. I just questioned the value of $30,000 a year. Thanks very much. Thanks for your comments. A uh, couple of quick things. I'll say that the uh, in terms of drones, I remind people that these the dollars listed in the agenda are cumulative over time. This is not each individual uh, budgeting. And also the other thing is this uh, this goes towards the amount of analysis and data uh, development that we have to do for all the projects we're doing. This really belies the amount of projects we're doing. And if you look at the other consent items, you see the amount of evacuation route hardening we're doing, the amount of material that needs to be documented both before and after the giant 280 project. All of this requires data analysis um, and for approvals, and you don't tend to see that. Uh, but the ability to really survey what this district is is where this comes into play. Uh, I mentioned on the, the, the IT aspects, um, we do know the searchability is not where you want it to be. We've talked about that. Um, the website has come a long way in terms of the, the way we use it. Uh, and the amount of responsiveness we have to uh, residents. In fact, we have staff that's really done an amazing job at really making it much more lively and interactive. And we, while we do want to get to document searchability, um, that, that also goes along with the way we're electronifying our documents now. And that's also a project you've seen on the books. One thing I will mention is that uh, any issues about that, I'm glad you bring it to me or to the general manager. Uh, the thing not to be done is going to our subcontractors and making comments there and inquiring with them about these issues, which would, of course, be inappropriate. Okay, uh, any other comments from staff about uh, or about consent items? I will entertain a motion. Will commissioner make the motion? The commissioner seconding the motion. Please state your names for the benefit of the recording. Tyson moves approval of consent. Thank you. Sherlock seconds. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Seeing none. Any public comment on that motion? Seeing none, let's vote. Okay, President Spreen. Yes. Vice President Sherlock. Yes. Commissioner CG. Yes, except for item A and B, which I was, I abstained because I wasn't here last week, last month. Thank you. Okay. Hold on one sec, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, Commissioner McDonald. Yes. Commissioner Tyson. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Yes. Okay, and the motion passes six to zero with one absent and one abstaining on item number 5A. Thank you very much. Moving on to item six, public hearing. Item 6A is a public hearing to consider the proposed special assessment costs associated with the abatement of hazardous weed, brush, and or rubbish 
growing on certain described properties within the district, declared to be a public nuisance at the commission meetings held on June 20, 2023, last year, and on January 16th of this year, 2024. The list of properties in the proposed special assessments are included in the agenda packet as Exhibit A to Resolution 24-07. Uh, Santa Clara County Weed Debatement Manager, Kumre, if you could please provide the commission and public with a brief overview of the abatement process. Uh, yes, my name is Mo Kumre. I am the Weed Abatement Manager for Santa Clara County. Uh, the process works. In December of each year, the, uh, the board passes a resolution declaring weeds, brush, and rubbish a public nuisance, sets a public hearing for property owners on the list to contest their inclusion. In January, you held that hearing, uh, so people had their opportunity to contest, and the decisions would have corrected the list for the ongoing season. All properties remaining on the list have, have been or in the process of being inspected. Uh, any property that fails the inspection would be given a notice, uh, if it's a vacant lot, we'll give them 15 days and then send a contractor out to perform the abatement. If it's a, a property with a structure on it, we will now be requesting uh, they grant consent to enter. If they do not grant consent, we will seek a warrant. Uh, improvements to the program to protect property owners and their rights. Uh, we're in that process now. We haven't completed it. All charges that currently apply are what's on the list now. Uh, the larger fees that you see are rollovers from last year for things that didn't make that particular cutoff for this year. With that, I can answer any any specific questions you have. Great. Thank you, sir. Any questions here? I know we've, we've been through this process before, so uh, I think most of us are familiar with it. And not seeing any public here who might be interested in it, but we will find out. I will now, in that case, I will now open the public hearing. The time is 7.14 p.m., Please note if any members of the public would like to contest the inclusion of their name or parcel number in Exhibit A of Resolution Number 24-07 of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District Board of Commissioners to adopt the weed abatement report and order the cost of abatement to be a special assessment on their property tax roll, now is the time to do so. Any and all persons interested having any objections to said list or to any matter contained therein may appear and be heard. Are there any comments from the public? I see none online or in person. Oh, well, making sure I don't miss anything. And I, in that case, that will make this a very straightforward issue. In that case, hearing none, the public hearing is closed. The time is still 7.14 p.m. Item 6B is resolution 24-07, adopting the weed abatement report and ordering the cost of abatement to be a special assessment on the identified properties. Are there, any, are there any clarifying questions from the commission? Last chance. Okay. Uh, hearing none, I will entertain a motion and a second. Warren moves to adopt resolution 2407. Easy second. Thank you. The item's open for discussion. Any discussion? Not expecting any. Thank you. Any additional public comments on this item in this motion? Seeing none, I think we can now vote. District Clerk Vargas, please conduct a roll call. Okay. President Spreen? Yes. Vice President Sherlock? Yes. Commissioner Besiege? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Okay, the motion passes six to zero with one absent. Thank you very much. And by the way, appreciate uh, your service, Mr. Kumra, who I believe uh, this is the last time we'll be seeing you after quite a few uh, years of, of working with you on this. So thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Moving on to item seven, fire chief reports. Item 7A is the monthly report for June 2024. And item 7B is the June report for Station 8. Uh, fire Chief Kirkhoff, if you could please provide these reports. Uh, good evening, President Spreen, Vice President Sherlock, commissioners, staff, and public. Uh, before you is... Okay, it's okay. <laughs> is the June 2024 monthly public safety report for the Los Altos Hills County Fire District. Um, I'll go ahead and continue. Uh, just uh, talking about the overview of it, you had 98 calls in the district. 
a uh, little spike uh, compared to the month prior, which is pretty typical given the fact that we are starting or have definitely been in fire season. Uh, you can go to the next. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> there was uh, no dollar loss in the district for the month um, with uh, the very uh, the distribution of call types uh, in alignment with uh, most other months or uh, typical months. Um, you see before you in the table the average call uh, response times, including call processing times at county communications and the number. And those are all, again, code three calls. So if you try to do uh, the alignment of numbers between uh, the table that's in the first column and the table that's in the second column, they won't align. But it's because we're counting code three calls versus code two calls uh, or total aggregate calls in the second column. With that said, there's a couple of programs in which uh, our, uh, our community education uh, program was out here uh, in the district. And with that said, I'll pause to take any questions before I move on to the Station 8 report. Any questions or comments from the commission? No, seeing none. Any questions from the public on this? Seeing none, thank you. You can proceed. Okay, so for Palo Alto Station 8, and again, uh, it is a collaborative partner between the district, Palo Alto, and uh, County Fire, Central Fire Protection District. In month of June, that staffing started uh, June 15th with Palo Alto Fire uh, taking that staffing month as a whole, and then County Fire is staffing it starting July 1st. There were only uh, five calls. Again, it's still early on in the fire season. Uh, two EMS, two cancel route, and one fire alarm. And that's the end of the report. Great, thank you. Any questions, follow-up from the commission? Any uh, public comment questions? A comment S over here. What's that? Oh, George. Uh, Chief, I just wanted to say thank you for having your, uh, your uh, firefighters staff the Los Altos Wine and Art event last weekend. You had quite a crew there, and it was great to see your presence. Um, again, we always try to support uh, any requests that come uh, uh, to uh, opportunity to educate, opportunity to engage, and then, um, again, just to be seen. Uh, so thank you for the invitation as well. Great. Thank you for the, thank you for the reports. Thanks for the comment. Uh, let's see. Moving on to item eight. Item eight is an update on the fiscal year 2023-24 financial audit process. And 8B is an update on the fiscal year 24-25 budget process. Finance Manager Morialli, could you please provide the updates? Yes, President Spring and Vice President Sherlock and members of the commission, good evening. I, I think I'll take both of these items together this evening. And, and I may, if you will, go with the budget first, because that is so proximate to what, we're, what we just talked about in this last meetings. So I'll wait for the slide here. And next slide. Okay, in terms of the fiscal year 24-25 budget, um, as, as the commission knows, it was fully approved on June 14th by, by the county. So that is uh, old news, if you will. But this past week, uh, we were, were happy to report uh, that the county confirmed uh, the actual system entry and approval of our fiscal year 23-24 budget rollovers in the amount of $2,387,500, uh, uh, $2.387,500. So with that, uh, the county will be processing uh, those amounts and they will put them in their financial system, we believe somewhere in August, September, October, potentially. But when they do, the total value of the budget uh, for next year will be $20.975 million, million. So I do want to just recognize the county, how just stellar their support has been, their communications. Uh, we have been in contact with them uh, so frequently, and it has been such an effective communication, and they, in fact, were able to help us through this rollover process, which is a brand new process uh, for the district, and this is the first year that we have activated it. Uh, and now that that's done, uh, Corey and I will be uh, placing all the budget numbers in the finance system, in the general ledger, uh, to start our July reporting in, uh, in this next month. So that's, that is the update on the budget. Maybe I'll stop there for any questions before I go on to audit. Any questions here? I think that's pretty straightforward. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, in terms of the audit, um, uh, much is the same. We This will be the third year where we'll be um, 
will we'll have the ability to you utilize Fector and Company. This is their third year of audit. I've contacted Fector, and we should be having a planning meeting with them, scheduled ten, ten, uh, scheduled, uh, ske tentatively scheduled for July 22nd, uh, and that will kick off the, aud the audit process. Um, we, as, as you can see in the financial reports in tonight's agenda, you can see that we obviously will have a good fiscal year and result report with growing, growing fund balances. Uh, as I discussed the audit with our audit partner, we don't see any government accounting standard board changes of note that would affect, affect us this particular year. But as I kind of mentioned last year, um, what we can expect some reporting changes this year, specifically uh, related to the historical updating of the valuation of our hydrants that we have on our financial statements. Uh, our, our hydrants have been in place since 1939. Uh, there's never been a formal study uh, of those valuations this year in discussion with our auditor. We'll look at that very, very closely. Uh, we will work with our uh, hydrant consultants. And so we anticipate there could be a valuation adjustment. If there is, it would most likely be a positive adjustment to the balance sheet. That's one thing we're expecting in the audit process. And also additionally, the next item on the agenda that the general manager will be speaking to of course, is the fire truck reimbursements. And we'll be working with the county and working with our auditors to see just how to categorize uh, those fund reserves or fund balance commitments. But that's something to be determined as the agreements are executed um, and the audit is in place. So we do expect those two changes this year in the audit process. Also, as was the case last year, uh, we really hope this year to introduce what's called an expanded statistical section, which is a supplement to the audit report. Um, but we hope to do that, do that this year and complete it. And what it does is it provides a multi-year metric and historical reporting of financial numbers. Um, and it usually is a five to 10 year reporting. We will give it our best shot this year uh, and try to put that in place. So with that, uh, that's the end of my report on both the budget and the audit, and I'm open for any questions or comments. Any questions or comments from the commission? Again, very straightforward. Appreciate it. Any public comments on this? Seeing none. Seeing none. Great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We appreciate the report. Thank, thank you. Okay. Moving on to item nine. Is that correct? Yes. Procure, proc procurement of two fire engine apparatuses and firefighting equipment. Item 9A is to approve the third supplemental fire and emergency medical services agreement with Central Fire for reimbursement, purchase, and operation of two fire engine apparatuses and firefighting equipment in the amount not to exceed $2.3 million. General Manager Logan, if you could please provide this report. Uh, yes, thank you. Board President Spring, Vice President Sherlock, commissioners, consultants, staff, and public. I would also like to welcome Santa Clara County Central Fire Protection District Fire Chief Kirkgow. Welcome. And Finance Director Niblia, welcome. And Facilities Director Snow, thank you for coming tonight and supporting this effort. Thank you for attending tonight and for your partnership and service to the fire district, our residents, and to the public. At the June 18th Commission meeting, the Commission received a report detailing the opportunities to partner with Central Fire for the acquisition of two fire engines and firefighting equipment and providing the rationale for the procurement to advance public safety from fires, wildfires, emergencies, or disasters. The commission gave direction to the general manager to move forward and return at the July 16th meeting with the type of engine, the equipment, and the operational and fiscal details and a procurement agreement to consider. I'm very pleased to report that these items are accomplished. Before you tonight, is the recommendation to approve the third supplemental fire and emergency medical services agreement for reimbursement, purchase, and operation of two type one fire engine apparatuses and peripheral firefighting equipment for the apparatuses to be paid for by the Los Altos Hills County Fire District in an amount equal to the cost to central fire to purchase the apparatuses, which shall not exceed $2,300,000 and to be owned, operated, maintained, and insured by Central Fire at its sole expense to enhance firefighting services and capabilities for the benefit of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District and its residents 
and for mutual aid to improve regional firefighting capabilities and for support to the mutual aid system within the region. Approval is also requested to delegate authority to the general manager to work with the county to increase the Los Altos Hills County Fire District fiscal 24-25 budget appropriation by $2,300,000 to further the terms outlined in the agreement. The factors that compel urgency in approving these recommendations are to proactively anticipate supply chain shortages resulting from longer build time of the apparatuses to mitigate infl inflation cost increases, to plan for increases in the population of Los Altos Hills that require additional fire services, and to provide regional benefits and a mutual aid system. The key components of the apparatus procurement are summarized as follows. Central Fire will negotiate and procure the two type one fire engine apparatuses and peripheral firefighting equipment. Los Altos Hills will reimburse Central Fire in the amount equal to the cost to Central Fire, which will not exceed $2,300,000. Central Fire shall provide, own, operate, maintain, insure, and staff the apparatuses and at its sole expense and indemnify Los Altos Hills County Fire District for their lifetime of use. The operational components, the district would have service of two Type 1 engines necessary for frontline response and as additional backup for engines to bolster their capacity and responsibility of the fleet in event of emergency, wildfire, earthquake, or events where firefighters are called in from off-duty and require additional apparatuses to deploy to move up and to frontline response. Engines would be assigned to adjoining fire stations, Fire Station 76 in the City of Los Altos and Fire Station 77 in Cupertino. The terms of the supplemental agreement is from July 16, 2024, through the expiration of the termination of the master services agreement, including any extensions to that agreement. The County Board of Supervisors will be considering the recommendation of approval of this agreement for the procurement of the two type one fire engines and the firefighting equipment with reimbursement by Los Altos Hills County Fire District at an August 2024 Board of Supervisors meeting. Fiscal impact, the Los Altos Hills County Fire District operating fund has a sufficient available fund balance for the procurement of the two type one engine apparatuses and the firefighting equipment. And the relationship to the 2327 uh, strategic plan, as stated in the strategic plan, efforts to increase firefighting services and capabilities for the residents of Los Altos Hills, the public, the region supports strategic plan goal one, prevention, protection and resiliency, goal two, pre preparedness, goal three, infrastructure, and goal four, st stability, sustainability by enhancing life and property safety and regional collaboration. I would like to express gratitude and sincere thanks to County Council team for their guidance, legal expertise, patience, and swift action to deliver this agreement within a short time period. So thank you, County Council team. Weeks before the commission meeting, gratitude to County OBA, who also provides expedient and sage advice as we link the finances and gratitude to the county team who monthly meets with us and supports our common efforts. Thanks to the internal team at LAHCFD to produce and finalize all the details of agreements every month. And with that, I would um, like to thank you and uh, turn over the comments to Chief Kirkow and her team if they would like to respond to any questions or make any comments. So Chief, delighted to have you here. Again, thank you for um, allowing us to speak, uh, bringing both uh, Director Snow and Director Nebla here uh, is also, again, a, a place that they can add uh, value and uh, information to what I'm about to say. A couple of things. Um, that the county, that county fire as the op area coordinator have done thus far early on in the fire season is we have 50 single overhead resources that have been deployed, 15 either strike teams or pieces of apparatus that have been deployed uh, in seven incidents throughout the state. And what we're really talking about is surge capacity within the res response service area for for Santa Clara County Fire Department. Um, it is not lost on me at all 
um, when I see Lahaina and the fire that occurred in Maui, a place that typically did not have the the fire risk that it has today, that this is widespread throughout the Western United States and definitely in te Texas and areas that typically had not been there. So we need to be really progressive in terms of front loading surge capacity. And one of the things that I brought with me today is the after action report from Lahaina. And the first five recommendations are talking about surge capacities and specifically the fleet because they had staff they didn't have the fleet. They didn't have the extra pieces of equipment that could be immediately put in place to help augment the emergency that they were dealing with on the island. Um, additionally, uh, some of the things that we note just in general throughout the state is that equipment is taking a really long time uh, to come through uh, the procurement process just from the build standpoint, which again, Director Snow can speak to. Um, I actually would like him to talk about our, our uh, uh, surplus equipment that we have offered for sale. And in, unlike years past, that is uh, being definitely in high demand because of the long build time. Director Snow. Sure, Dave Snow, Santa Clara County Fire Department. Um, we have some older vehicles that are currently listed on, with an online auction service provider. And we're getting a lot of emails and phone calls every day. We're on the West Coast, so we don't have a lot of rust corrosion or chassis rotting underneath them from prolonged exposure to salt from the roads. But also there's many, many small departments throughout the United States in particular that don't have eight to 900 days when their one engine goes down. And they don't have the amount of funds it takes for a new fire engine. And so we, we definitely see the pressure both in what we call the used apparatus market, if you will, in addition to new purchases. And to further bolster Chief's comments, when we look at fire engine builds, there's only a certain pool of vendors able to provide engines for the apparatus that meet California emission standards, which is the right thing to do. We want to reduce pollution even in emergency situations because of all the driving around that we do. But nevertheless, with that, that the less engines available with a ever increasing demand on those engines, it just prolongs the build times out there. Thank you, Director Snow. Um, one of the things that I wanna be really clear about, the partnership with Los Altos Hills County Fire District that um, benefits directly and indirectly the community, the dollar value for the engine, what is still on Central Fire Protection District is the additional infrastructure that we will need to bolster up. That is, and the mechanic shop, that is making sure that our stations are, um, uh, again, outfitted or modified for those uh, engines. Um, we are also looking at uh, additional staff. Those are all on Central Fire Protection District to fund. Um, and that we will continue to do that. And again, having these red flag uh, days that occurred over the 4th of July weekend, I emailed um, General Manager Logan with the plan that we had. We had uh, several uh, overhead assignments available as part of the preposition, as well as a task force in the county. And what that meant that any fire within the county um, is it within um, our jurisdictional border if uh, needed and, or warranted, we would immediately send that. So we're front loading resources immediately rather than having to go through comm center to comm center to get additional resources. So we're working hard to uh, be ahead of the fire risk, but knowing that it's a multiple pronged approach and this is just one of them. Uh, end of report, and I can take any further questions. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, any uh, clarifying questions from the commission? Let there be some comments. I have comments, if please. that's okay. And please, please bear with me. I wrote them down so I wouldn't ramble too much. <laughs> um, commissioners, fire chief, council, general manager Logan, um, our amazing staff that protects all of us. Um, I just I wanted to share my opinions and thoughts with you on the purchase of the new Type One fire apparatus. First of all, our fire engines have to be regularly taken out of service for preventative maintenance 
as well as unpredictable equipment failures. So you always need reserve apparatus to replace that equipment when it's being maintained or broken. Um, and again, this is one of the, the one of the reasons we need dependable fire apparatus to fill those gaps. Another crucial reason we need extra fire apparatus to respond is because we are part of a statewide mutual aid program where we will help any community in the state during times of great need, while at the same time, any fire department throughout the state will respond to the Los Altos Hills County Fire District in our times of greatest need. When our firefighters are called upon to assist other communities, we need to have the ability to backfill our fire stations with oncoming firefighters. To do that, we need to have available working fire engines for them to staff. A fire engine can be requested for one day, up to weeks or months, at a large incident, the crews are normally a maximum, they work a maximum of 14 days. That's what I worked in Santa Rosa. Then you're replaced, but the fire engine is still there. So you need reliable equipment to backfill those positions. Uh, some people ask why we cannot just purchase a new fire, fire apparatus off of a lot like you would a new car. Um, if you can actually find new apparatus to purchase from a manufacturer, it would not match what we currently have. And, and the importance of that is we need a unified fleet of fire apparatus so that any firefighter in county fire can go to any compartment any on that engine, open it up and know what's in there and what piece of equipment, you know, and how to use it. Um, type one fire engines, as we, we uh, that's what we commonly, that's like the foundation of a, a basic city fire department. You know, that's your, your standard structural firefighting engine. But there's so much more than that during fire season, which unfortunately for most of us is beginning to last most of the year. Um, type one fire engines are equipped with all the special wildland firefighting equipment, including special wildland hose, hand tools, and other equipment for fighting wildland fires. Uh, type one fire engines may not have the off-road capabilities of a type three fire engine, which is the four wheel drive engines we have like up at El Monte station, but they are equipped for wild um, wildland events where they can do progressive hose lays where they park the engine on the side of the road and they do a hose lay up the hill fighting the fire. They keep attaching more and more hoses to each other. They have the hand tools to construct, construct fire lines to prevent the fire from spreading. Um, and they also do structural protection where they park at a house and pull the hose lines around the house to protect it from an upcoming fire. So that's just another a value of the type one fire engine. Um, I believe we had a question from a citizen last meeting concerning the fact that the new engines would not be specifically housed at the El Monte station. Um, and, and just that they would, but the thing is they would be housed nearby stations. So they're really just minutes away. You know, as soon as you get the, replacement firefighters to come and staff those engines, you know, they're, they're within minutes of helping us. And uh, speaking as a former firefighter, there's nothing worse or more humiliating than not being able to help another jurisdiction because you have no available working apparatus. So thank you for your time and that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Any other comments here from commissioners? I just have one question. Um, you said there were five uh, key learnings from the Maui fire. And that the equipment was one of them, or was that the primary? There were 101, but the top five, or the first five, had uh -huh. to do with equipment. equipment and equipment. Uh, to the commissioner's point, standardization, having search capacity, making sure that um, they were all outfitted the same so you wouldn't have reserve apparatus, for example, on not having the tool cache that your frontline apparatus has. Those are some of the recommendations that came out of this. This is available online. Sure. If you just do a Google search, you can Google you can Google. find the Maui um, uh, Lahaina uh, after action report. Thank you. Any other comments here? I see Jim. I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, first, thank you very much for enlightening me. I, I really didn't realize how much the value of these uh, type one fire engines are. Thank you. The second thing is that I think as an engineer, there are, there are two types of en energy that we, we kind of consider. One is potential energy, the other one is dynamic uh, kinetic energy. Potential energy is the money that's sitting in a bank. It doesn't do anybody any good. Kinetic energy is when you put that money to, to use to protect the community. I, I really 
wholeheartedly in favor of this. Thank you. Any other comments? I'll say, I just want to add that I've been able to see that there have been some very long days and late nights from a lot of people, all with the same goal of making this happen. So, that, And that's why it's really uh, all come together today. So thank everyone. You got a sense of all the different names that have been involved in making this happen. Now I will add my, my comments to Jim's, which is it really is responsible. I feel it's responsible for our residents to have this kind of capacity. We do not have a type one at El Monte. We don't have a type one here in Los Altos Hills. This puts two type one engines available for us as a resource in the case of a big incident. And I'd hate to have, have residents thinking in the case of a big problem, why didn't you have what we needed available? Yeah. And, and station 76 is right across uh, the expressway from the Southern part of the district. It responds into the Southern part of the district. So it, it is, you know, it's, it's what, you know, is the engine that shows up when people call for service in the Southern part of the district. So it is effectively in the district. Exactly. Let's see. In that case, um, uh, let's. I would entertain a motion. I've heard some positive things here. And a second. Sherlock moves to approve the agreement. McDonald seconds. Great. Thank you. Uh, any any more discussion here from commission? Any discussion from the public? I see we have at least one. <clears throat> Alan Epstein. Um, um, make no mistake about this. This is not about enhancing district safety. This is about giving district money to the Central Fire Department. The story presented here is intended to paper over the facts. In this case, the monetary tokens being traded are fire engines. First section seven of the master agreement could not be clearer. All vehicles and equipment necessary to perform the duties required by this agreement shall be furnished by the Central Fire District. It continues, in the event new vehicles or equipment are needed to be purchased or existing vehicles or equipment needed to be replaced, Central Fire shall have the sole responsibility for purchasing the equipment and the city in Los Altos shall not be charged. The contracted amount the fire district pays already provides for both operating and capital costs. Second, the staff report claims that this equipment will strengthen community safety, but in reality it will not. The engines are intended as replacements for existing units and will be placed in Los Altos and Cupertino. About 13% of Loyola Station E76 calls are to the district. The existing engine is 14 years old and approaching the end of its frontline use. The station has three firefighters. So replacing the engine does little to increase safety since it does not add capacity. Los Altos will receive 87% of the alleged benefit but contributes nothing. The district benefit for supplying to engine to Monta Vista station is even more remote. In fiscal year 24, E77 made only four calls to the district, less than 1% of the instances, and only 0.3% of the instances to which the station responded. E77 is eight years old. Monta Vista is also a three-person station. Even if Central Fire committed to adding an additional company of firefighters to the station 77, at an annual operating cost in excess of $2.5 million, this, this new engine negligibly increase, enhances district safety. Recently, LAFCO completed a countywide fire study in which all of the fire departments and districts participated. A shortage of apparatus was not identified as an issue. In fiscal year 23, Central Fire ended its fiscal year with a $16 million favorable variance. There is no indication that Central Fire does not have the financial ability to fulfill its contractual apparatus obligations. If equipment has long lead times, then they should hurry up and place it on order. It is shocking that after spending nine months preparing a budget that was approved just days ago, essential equipment is an afterthought and the budget needs to be amended. There are a number of misleading statements in the staff report and draft agreement. If the district wants to give Central Fire $2.3 million in addition to the $2.5 million it is already committed to give them, the district should be upfront about it and not attempt to cloud the issue. The district mm -hmm. is certainly not receiving $2.3 million in additional benefit Please to what it is comments. already entitled. I just need like half Go 30 ahead. seconds to finish up. Go ahead. If the district proceeds with these gifts, my recommendation to the Los Altos Hills Council is to initiate action to absorb the fire district. Substantial efficiencies and benefits would flow to its residents and the taxpayers who provided the $40 million in the district's coffers. Thank you. Any other public comments? 
I don't see any. Okay. In that case, any other comments here? We'll move on to a vote. Roll call, please. Okay. President Spreen. Yes. Vice President Sherlock. Yes. Commissioner Basiji. Yes. Commissioner McDonald. Yes. Commissioner Tyson. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Yes. Okay. And the motion passes six to zero with one absent. Thank you. Item 9B is to delegate authority, this is related, to the general manager to work with the County of Santa Clara to increase the district fiscal year 25 budget appropriations appropriately. General Manager Logan, please provide this report. Um, I'll just stand on what I had provided before and just say with, the, with this delegation of authority, then I will work with um, uh, county, fire, or county Finance and OBA to make sure that the funds are um, uh, attributed properly to further the terms of the third supplemental agreement. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any clarifying questions about this uh, delegation of authority to uh, the general manager? Seeing none, entertain a motion. Warren, uh, motions, delegate authority. McDonald seconds. Thank you. Uh, I don't think we need conversation here. Uh, any public comment on this? Seeing none, let's move to a vote. President Spreen? Yes. Vice President Sherlock? Yes. Commissioner Basiji? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Okay. The motion passes six to zero with one absent. Thank you very much. Moving on to item 10, an update on district employee benefits. Uh, Human Resources and Strategic Planning Consultant Scott will be providing us a report. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners and staff and all who are present here tonight. This is an informational item, uh, no action needed. And uh, we'll move on to the next slide. As a refresher, there are uh, three components of the district's new uh, benefits program. Um, the first is uh, an HRA, a health reimbursement account known as a QSERA, a qualified small employer health reimbursement account. And this is a tool that allows employees to um, be reimbursed for certain qualified uh, medical and health costs. Um, and that would be funded by the district equal to the IRS limits. The second component is a deferred compensation plan with a district match of up to 4% of annual salary for employees who participate. And then the third is the employee assistance program, which has already been implemented. Next slide. So um, with regard to the QSERA plan, um, the district selected as their vendor PeopleKeep which is a company specializing in administration of benefit plans, um, particularly this sort of niche area of HRAs and these um, small employer HRAs. They use their proprietary software to provide easy access to current information for employees and compliance actions and reports for the district. County Council has reviewed the terms and conditions and is meeting with the People Keep Council later this week once that legal review is done, there is a very short turnaround to customize for the district and invite employees to enroll and attend training on how to use their HRA accounts. In addition to an online dashboard that's always available for employees to access on the status, uh, PeopleKeep provides customer service and support. And next slide, with regard to the deferred comp plan. Um, this is where the devil is in the details sentiment certainly applies. Uh, these plans are a little more complex. And um, currently, County Council is reviewing terms and conditions, and we have a follow-up meeting scheduled next week to review together with Council. Once the legal review process is finished, an implementation team consisting of myself, Russ, and Alliant and Empower staff will develop the plan document. And the next slide. Then um, an employee orientation and training will be scheduled and employees can proceed to set up their accounts. This plan is trailing slightly behind the HRA consistent with the timeline of 45 to 60 days that the vendor said would be required for implementation. And uh, thank you to the commission for approving these programs and to the county council's office for their diligent review and feedback we appreciate their support and responsiveness on these items. We are making progress with these programs um, 
and the deferred comp is more complex, but we anticipate implementation soon and will ensure there is support and training for employees as they enroll and make their participation decisions. And with that, that concludes my presentation. Happy to answer any questions. Any comments on this from anyone? These are pretty straightforward. I know it's a lot of work to make this happen, but uh, in the end, it's what we expect from, for benefits for our employees. So thank you. Thank you. Or any, any public comment on this item? I don't see any. Seeing none. Okay, thank you. Moving on to item 11. Um, item 11 is to present, uh, 11A is to present the memorandum report for items 11B through 11J. And uh, General Manager Logan will be leading this. I know this is a rather long item, uh, but I think she'll explain why it's a long item. So I appreciate everyone's patience at working through this. Okay, thank you. Thank you, President Spring and commissioners. Uh, the recommendation tonight is to approve the amendments, and I think there are nine of them, to the employment agreement um, in items 11 through uh, 11 through 11J. These amendments revise the current sick leave provisions in the employee uh, employment agreements to conform with the new state law for sick leave that accrues sick leave at one hour per th one hour per 30 hours worked, which is the preferred accru accrual rate set by the state and sets an accrual cap of 120 hours. The first four amendments also contain an annual salary advancement. So um, I'd like to say that proposed amendments to the employment agreements are included in the District Board of Commissioners agenda materials for these items, Government Codes, California Government Code Section 549 53C3 requires the commission to orally report a summary of the proposed compensation changes before taking final action to adopt that compensation, hereby approving the employment agreement. Key components of the proposed compensation are described in detail in the proposed employment agreements. I'll now summarize personnel item 11B. The proposed First Amendment to the Atwell Full-Time General Analyst Employment Agreement has an effective date of July 16, 2024, and includes the following changes to compensation. And this is an annual compensation advance, advancement. Wages increase compensation to $62 an hour. Benefits, the position will receive certain benefits, including sick leave accrual of one hour per 30 hours worked up to a maximum accrual of 120 hours. All of other benefits, including paid holidays, vehicle stipend, uniform allowance, remain unchanged from the original employment agreement. Thank you, General Manager. Any clarifying questions? I'll try to move. Seeing none here, I'd entertain a motion. We're going to be allowed, we're gonna uh, get ready for these. We have a lot of motions and seconds on these. Question as to process. Um, can we bundle these things? We have asked. We hope to do that, and that's not the case. Now, that's why there will be there will be a few of these that have a their annual salary increase with the sick leave change. I think five of them are just being updated because of the sick leave change. And no, we cannot bundle those five together. But we will only read the sick leave update. So we okay. do have to have nine separate uh, motions and and votes on contracts. That's my understanding. All right. Yeah, that is correct. And we did check that because that was the first thing we wanted to do is be expedient and efficient, but uh, wasn't able to do it because these are all. <laughs> you want to speak? I'm speaking oh. for you. I think he's no, trying to no, duck no, no, something no, I'm, here. I, <laughs> I was actually clarifying that this was based on uh, input from our my office's labor and employment team, not not me. But there is <laughs> as there is a government code section that requires open session consideration and an oral summary of any modifications to board approved employment contracts. Well, I don't want to go against that. So let's, let's bear with it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Did I get a motion in second? Yeah, that was a motion on, on B. Okay. Sherlock seconds. Okay. I don't think we need conversation in here, but I see we have a public comment on this item specifically. Um, it's actually on the employment items in general. Uh, but this is the opportunity, so I'll, I'll make it. My question was similar to Commissioner Tyson's. Um, why are employment agreements necessary for full-time employees? The town has 27 employees, and only the city manager has a contract. The county has 14,000 employees. Do they all have employment agreements that have to be approved by the Board of Supervisors? Um, will all these agreements have to be modified yet again because the district added a 457 pension plan and a small be business uh, benefit plan 
As I stated previously, I would either reduce or eliminate raises this year since the district put in place a health care plan and a 4% matching uh, 457 pension plan, and these, these programs are just another form of cash. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your comments. I will add that uh, the benefits thing has been something we've been looking for in order to be have an equal footing in hiring employees that's separate from their salaries. Um, and the history of how we've hi had to hire one at a time is why we have individual contracts. It is a conversation, but that's not an agendized item to discuss now. So uh, we can take that offline and discuss that some other time in terms of why the history is like that and, and whether there's some reason in the future to change to a, uh, a situation where we wouldn't have to read through these. But for now, we are stuck going through all of these tonight. So uh, I have, we have a motion in a second. Uh, if we could have an, if we could have a roll call, please. Okay. Uh, President Spreen. Yes. Vice President Sherlock. Yes. Commissioner Basiji. Yes. Commissioner McDonald. Yes. Commissioner Tyson. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Yes. And the motion passes six to zero with one absent. And moving on to the next one, <laughs> General Manager Logan. Oh, microphone, please. Oh. I will now summarize personnel item 11C, the proposed First Amendment to the Atwell full-time exempt field manager employment agreement has an effective date of July 16, 2024, and includes the following changes to compensation. Wages sets the annual compensation at $171,600, which is equivalent to a rate of pay of $78 an hour. Benefits, the person will receive certain benefits, including sick leave accrual, one hour earned per 30 hours worked, up to a maximum accrual of 120 hours. All other benefits, including vacation, technology stipend, vehicle stipend, uniform allowance remain unchanged from the original employment agreement. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? May I have a motion and second? I move that you may approve. Warren seconds. Thank you. Uh, any public comments? Seeing none, let's roll call. Okay. President Spreen? Yes. Vice President Sherlock? Yes. Commissioner Basiji? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Okay, motion passes six to zero with one absent. Thank you. Moving on to 11D. I will now summarize personnel item 11D, the proposed First Amendment to the Atwell Part-Time Exempt Finance Manager Employment Agreement has an effective date of July 16th, 2024, and includes the following changes to compensation. Wages sets the annual compensation at $115,440, which is equivalent to a rate of pay of $111 an hour. Benefits, the position will receive certain benefits, including sick leave accrual of one hour earned per 30 hours worked up to a maximum accrual of 120 hours. All of the benefits remain unchanged from the original employment agreement. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a motion and a second? Warren moves to approve um, item 11D. Sherlock seconds. Thank you. Uh, I, I see for comments. Seeing none, let's roll call. Okay. President Spreen? Yes. Vice President Sherlock? Yes. Commissioner Rasiji? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Motion passes six to zero with one absent. Moving to 11E. I will now summarize personnel item 11E. The proposed second amendment to the Atwell part-time technical analyst a project manager's employment agreement includes the following changes of compensation. Wages, increased compensation to $88 per hour, not to exceed $92 dollars on an annual basis, effective September 1st, 2024. Benefits, the position will receive certain benefits, including sick leave accrual of one hour earned per 30 hours worked, up to a maximum accrual of 120 hours, effective July 16th, 2024. All of the benefits, including vehicle stipend, uniform allowance, um, uniform allowance remain unchanged. But thank you. Thank you. Uh, motion, please. Sherlock sure moves to approve. Ice and seconds. Any comments? Seeing none, let's vote. President Spring. Yes. Vice President Sherlock. Yes. Commissioner Basiji. Yes. Commissioner McDonald. Yes. Commissioner Tyson. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Yes. Motion passes six to zero with one absent. We go on to item F. I will now summarize personnel item F. The proposed Sixth Amendment to the Atwell Part-Time District Clerk Employment Agreement extends the term to August 31st, 2025, and includes the following change. Sick leave accrual of one hour earned per 30 hours worked up to a maximum accrual of 120 hours, effective July 16th, 2024. All other compensation and benefits, including vehicle stipend, remain unchanged. 
Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, I'm just going to add that for the those previous contracts, uh, I don't want this our rush to move through this bureaucracy to uh, overshadow our appreciation for those employees who have just received an increase because we're really <laughs> impressed with what they've done, and I want to thank them for that. So uh, please don't let us look like we're we're not appreciating all of that. So moving on, um, motion please and second. Sherlock moves to approve. Warren seconds. Thank you. Public comments? None. Let's vote. Okay. President Spreen? Yes. Vice President Sherlock? Yes. Commissioner Pasigi? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Motion passes six to zero with one absent. Item 11G, please. I will now summarize personnel item 11G, the proposed First Amendment to the at-will full-time exempt emergency services manager employment agreement includes the following change. Sick leave accrual of one hour earned per 30 hours worked up to a maximum accrual of 120 hours effective July 16th, 2024. All other compensation and benefits, including vacation, technology stipend, vehicle stipend, and uniform allowance remains unchanged. Thank you. Thank you. Motion, please. Procedure moves, we approve. Warren seconds. Thank you. Public comments? Seeing none, let's vote. President Spreen? Yes. Vice President Sherlock? Yes. Commissioner Besigi? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Okay. Motion passes six to zero with one absent. 11H. Um, I think we're at G. Oh, I, thought, I think we just did G. G. I think G is listed on there twice. We just did G. And it's a different position. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. It should be I. No. Oh, is it H? Oh, oh, did it H? Uh, community disappear? education and risk reduction <laughs> manager. Okay. So which one is it? This uh, the H. H, exactly, yes. Oh, thank you. Okay. The proposed third amendment to the Atwell part-time community education risk reduction manager employment agreement includes the following change. Sick leave accrual of one hour earned per 30 hours worked up to a maximum accrual of 120 hours effective July 16th, 2024. All other compensation and benefits, including vehicle stipend and uniform allowance remains unchanged. Thank you. Thank you. Motion, please. Tyson moves. Warren seconds. Thank you. Public comments? Seeing none, let's vote. Um, actually, I did have someone point out um, that's online oh, for the um, field manager. Um, just for the record, what was read to the commission was the incorrect rate. Um, mm. So I just wanted, for the record, it is correct in the actual agreement that the employee will sign. But let me try to find which one that is now. Hold on. Are we, are we good? Um, okay. It was 11C. Okay. Yeah. So uh, just to make sure we're all good with that. Are we fine exactly. contractually? Mm -hmm. I think yeah, Contract contractual we're fine. Um and I'm not sure what the she's saying, let's see. Misread the field manager hourly rate, got the annual salary correct. Yeah, but I noticed that the, you seventy eight hour dollars per hour doesn't come to hundred and seventy one six. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The one seventy one six is correct. Is that correct, General Manager? The one the one seventy one six hundred annually is correct. Yeah. Great. And that and was I apologize right. for that. <laughs> okay. Okay, but now now we'll I'll do a roll call for item. Back to H. H. Yes. Back, back to, to H. eleven H. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, President Spring. Yes. Vice President Sherlock. Commissioner Basigi. Yes. Commissioner McDonald. Yes. Commissioner Tyson. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Yes. And the motion passes six to zero with one absent. Thank you. Um, eleven eleven I please. Okay. Uh, the summary of personnel item 11I, the proposed second amendment to the Atwell part-time operations project manager employment agreement includes the following change. Sick leave, sick leave accrual of one hour earned per 30 hours worked up to a maximum accrual of 120 hours effective July 16th, 2024. All other compensation and benefits, including vehicle stipend and uniform allowance remains unchanged. Thank you. Thank you. Motion, please. Warren moves 11I. Sherlock seconds. Thank you. Any public comments? Seeing none, let's take a roll call. Okay. President Spain? Yes. Vice President Sherlock? Yes. Commissioner Basigi? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Tyson? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Yes. Motion passes six to zero with one absent. Thank you. Item 11J, please. Yes, I will now summarize personnel item 11J. The proposed First Amendment to the Atwell full-time exempt programs planning and grants manager employment agreement includes the following change. Sick leave accrual of one hour earned per 30 hours worked up to a maximum accrual of 120 hours effective July 16th, 2024. 
all other compensation and benefits, including vacation, technology, stipend, vehicle stipend, and uniform allowance remains unchanged. Thank you. Thank you. And guess what I'm going to ask for? McDonald moves to approve. Jay. Oh, get in there. Okay. <laughs> Warren seconds. Thank you. Uh, any public comments? Nope. Seeing none. President. Nope. <laughs> President Spain. It's a roll call. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Vice President Sherlock. Yes. Commissioner Basigi. Yes. Commissioner McDonald. Yes. Commissioner Tyson. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Yes. Okay, motion passes six to zero with one absolute. Great. Thank you, everyone, for working through that. Uh, moving on to item 12A, future agenda items. This is an opportunity for commissioners to provide reports or any future agenda topics. Any comments from the commission? Uh, please. It's it's look more of a look backwards because we've been in this rush right these last few minutes here. But I just say I, I really appreciate the staff reports that went into the consent uh, calendar. They gave me a real. I love puzzling over the maps. I love seeing how much the Firewise communities have grown since we last talked about it. So I just want you to know we're paying attention and appreciating that, even if we're not spending too much time talking about it here. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Appreciate the comment. Um, let's see. Uh, any public comment on future agenda items? Seeing none. Uh, moving on to item 12B. This is the notice that the next regular commission meeting is scheduled for August 20th, 2024, in person and hybrid here at the Los Altos Hills Town Hall Chambers. Any additional comments here from the commission on that date? Any problems for anybody there? Seeing none, good to know. Any public comments on that item on that date? Not expecting any, great, thank you. In that case, uh, before we move on, I'm, I wanna thank uh, staff for running this meeting, which had its special things with the uh, um, assessments. And I also wanna thank Oswaldo Murillo, who's in the back helping us out with video all the time and, and goes unappreciated. So thank you, Oswaldo. Uh, item 13 is, is adjournment. This concludes the July 16th, 2024 regular meeting of the Los Altos Hills County Fire District. This meeting is adjourned at 8.08 PM. Emergency Services Manager Beebe, please stop the recording.